Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Another big groundbreaking in downtown Kansas City this week. And by big, we mean 24 stories and almost 300 residential units. City leaders celebrated the start of construction for Two Light. It's an apartment tower in the Power and Light District. It is the second of four luxury apartment buildings planned by the Cordish companies. Two Light is expected to open in two years. One Light opened just three months ago, and it already is more than 90% leased. These residential projects are part of $1.6 billion in economic development projects underway downtown since voters approved the streetcar district in December of 2012. Does your pet need to update its shots or get a KCMO pet license? For just $30 for altered pets and $40 for unaltered pets, Spay Neuter KC will offer its Tag License Chip Package for pets belonging to KCMO residents. You can take advantage of this special deal on Saturday, March 26th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Hillcrest Community Center, which is located at 10401 Hillcrest Road. The TLC package includes a rabies vaccination, KCMO pet license, and a microchip. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Kevin LaPointe, the city forester for the city of Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. And we're out here today on a fairly nice day uh, looking at ash trees. And as you can see behind me, we've got one of the ash trees on this block which is lined with ash trees both sides that we've begun to remove. And this is all part of a wood utilization program that we're instituting to help take some of these ash trees that we can't save from the emerald ash borer that are needing to be removed. And we're salvaging some of the wood material out of it. The lower trunk of this tree behind me, you can see, makes a great log. It's solid wood, even though the whole top of the tree is infested with the beetle and it's dying. And we're going to take that log to the Urban Lumber Company as part of a partnership that we have. The Missouri Department of Conservation has given us a grant to help utilize some of this urban wood. This is a limb out of the upper crown, the upper part of that tree that we're removing. And as you can see going down, all this woodpecker damage up and down this limb. This is where EAB, the emerald ash borer, the larvae were down underneath the bark feeding all summer long and sometime this fall. The woodpeckers got in there and pulled, extracted out the, the larvae and feed on them. So you can see all the emerald ash borer beetles that were in this one limb from all the woodpecker damage. And there's probably some still in here that they missed. There's probably still some live larvae underneath the bark of this limb. And this is just one limb out of a very large tree. And so all over the city, we're seeing this kind of woodpecker damage developing. It's very indicative of the beetle population is growing and these trees are all going to start dying. Uh, this summer I expect to see a lot of trees throughout the metro area starting to die from the tops down where these beetles have been feeding and causing damage for the last few years. Hi, my name is Tim O'Neill and I'm the manager and co-owner of the Urban Lumber Company and we are pleased to be partnered with the Department of Conservation and Kansas City Parks and Rec. We are taking in ash trees that are being removed due to the emerald ash borer disease and we're turning them into useful products like this paneling, for example. We take the trees and we saw them up and we dry the lumber and the lumber is available for sale on our racks and it's wood so you can do anything you want with it. You can cut it up, stick it back together. It's a great creative alternative for people looking for hardwood lumber. When the logs come in, they're sorted in our back lot and when it's time to saw the log, we bring it up on our patio and we chop the ends off and seal the ends so that the ends don't dry out and check. And then they're brought into the sawmill and then on the sawmill they're slabbed out, rotated to slabbed out, and the boards are taken and put on the wall, numbered, measured, and entered into our database. We take photographs of all the boards which uh, are available on our website, so when people go on our website, urbanlumberco.com, they can see the board images and the data about that particular board, including where it was taken from, if we have that information. Uh, and then they go out into the yard and they're air dried or kiln dried. And that takes a long time, usually it's between uh, three months to a year, depending on the thickness of the board. After that time passes, the boards are brought back in, they're uh, inventoried and labeled and put on our racks and then they're ready for customers, retail customers to come in and pick through and pick up for their own personal projects. Uh, one universal truth is that everybody who sees a truck go down the road with a load of logs that's going to be turned into mulch doesn't like it. Everybody that comes in our door hates to see that 
And what we're doing is we're taking trees that would normally be turned into mulch and we're turning them into useful products and people really respond to that. Um, in our commercial world with IKEA furniture and mail order products, nobody really has a great connection to nature or usually not as much as they want to. And having urban trees, things that grow in our city that they can point to that was in a neighborhood that they know of, have it turn into a tabletop that's now a part of their life is a very meaningful component in people's lives and a lot of our customers really respond to that. Hi, I'm Channel 2's Chris Hernandez. We are at 13th and Grand where the first two of 25 interactive kiosks are being installed. This is the first physical sign of the upcoming Smart City Initiative. Bob Bennett, the Chief Innovation Officer for the City of Kansas City, and this is the first piece of our Smart Cities technologies that's being deployed here in Kansas City. What you're going to see over the course of the next 90 days or so is a whole suite of things which are going to better connect you to your city. In this particular experience, you're going to see a series of posters on which you can tap to find out more about that particular event or if you just want to search for what's happening with the latest restaurant deals, what's going on across the street at the Sprint Center, or what's going on in a local neighborhood like the Crossroads or River Market, you'll be able to touch icons and figure out what's happening near you. And the coolest thing about this is you'll be able to meet your friends. Meet me at the kiosk, you'll be able to say. There'll be 25 of them eventually, ranging as far north as River Market and as far south as Crown Center. What's interesting about the content that will be on these kiosks is that it will be hyper-local, meaning that if you walk up to this one, you might see ads for a lunch special at a restaurant that's within a block of here. Uh, you can also dig into Kansas City history. You can also find out how to contact the city of Kansas City, Missouri, so that we can help you with basic city services. K-City Post, we're building an interactive uh, channel for the city of Kansas City. Uh, it is a community uh, bulletin board, the way we like to refer to it, for smart cities, which Kansas City is becoming uh, the first real smart city platform uh, and the largest in North America. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, program built around the small business community uh, where we're going to allow each and every one of the small businesses to get on this network easily accessible, easily affordable, uh, where they can push out their messages in real time. Um, and it's just a, it's a dynamic channel that's going to help people, uh, depending upon where they are in the city, get information that's relevant to them. Even if it's finding out where the streetcar is, they're going to be able to track where that streetcar is at any given moment, depending upon where they are. Throughout the year, you will see even more smart city initiatives roll out in Kansas City. It's all part of an effort to make this a technologically advanced city and really just a better experience for you as you live, work, and play in downtown Kansas City. For Channel 2, I'm Chris Fernandez. What's in your garage? under your sink, or at the back of the closet. In many homes, that's where you'll find motor oil, old paint, cleaners, burnt out light bulbs, or fertilizer. When you're ready to get rid of these materials, don't pour them down the drain or put them in the trash. Instead, take them here, Kansas City's Household Hazardous Waste Center. We collected 1,375,000 pounds last year alone. On Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, residents drive up with all kinds of hazardous waste. Paint is by far the most common, but environmental manager Robert Fort says some items require a call to the bomb squad. We've had anything from ammunition from World War II to picric acid, which is an explosive when it crystallizes. Casey Water operates the Household Hazardous Waste Program because proper handling of these materials prevents waste from entering our rivers and streams. It keeps the materials from getting into our groundwater systems or our wastewater systems. There is a long list of hazardous items that can be dropped off at the facility free of charge. It includes automotive products, batteries, paint, antifreeze, light bulbs, fuels, pesticides, solvents, and used oils. 
This isn't just a drop-off, there's also a swap shop inside. Partially used or even sometimes brand new products are available for free. In the summertime, these shelves are loaded with paint. We recycle paint in five gallon buckets and we do white, beige, and gray. Um, it's $20 a bucket. The service is free to Kansas City residents and those who live in the more than 50 participating communities. You'll find a full list of those cities online at kcwaterservices.org. Proof of residency is required. Hi, I'm Consuelo Cruz with Culture and Creative Services with information on upcoming arts and cultural events that are brought to you with support of the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. And I'm here at the American Jazz Museum in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District with the new executive director, Chepto Cositan Buckner, who just started on March 3rd. Congratulations, Chepto. Thank and you, Consuelo. thank Gonzalo. you for having us. And thank you so much. I'm glad to have you guys over here at the Jazz Museum. Welcome. Thank you. And what a way to start out Women's History Month. You started on March 3rd, and you also have this great new exhibit that is 50 Women, a celebration of women's contributions to ceramic arts. And um, we have so many ceramic artists that are represented here, and this is only one of the programs that is happening at the American Jazz Museum. And the, and the exhibit opens on March 16th, which coincides with the National Conference, the National Council on Education for the Ceramic Arts Conference that is here this week. Can you tell us how the exhibition came to the American Jazz Museum and about some of the works that are in the exhibit? Um, I, I can't probably address the works in the exhibit, but I can tell you that our partnership with UMKC uh, was a way that we were able to acquire this exhibit. I think also the Jazz Museum uh, Changing Gallery is a very appropriate place to be able to exhibit this, this, this particular exhibit and beginning to uh, showcase art east of truth is very important as well. Also, this is only one program that you have that is going on at this time. If you go to your website, the www.americanjazzmuseum.org, there is something happening every day at not just this location, but you have different areas that represent the American Jazz Museum. Can you give us some information about what might be happening currently and then give us a sneak peek uh, to what to expect for the summer and maybe even into the fall. Oh yes, definitely. I mean, yes, Consellas is right. A lot, a lot is happening at 18th and Vine and especially at the American Jazz Museum. Just this weekend, we expect Patty Austin, a Grammy Award winner, who will be uh, performing in uh, celebration and in honor of Black History Month the same night. Uh, we will have Lady Gaviana at the Blue Room, again uh, celebrating Mary Lou Williams, again in, in honor of Black History Month. We have performance at the Blue Room four nights a week. Uh, we have a performance at the gym maybe twice a month, but also we have corporates and uh, community events that are going on at the gym as well. And we continue, other than this exhibit for the, the, the changing gallery, that we will always, every, every three months, we are able to change over and bring in a new exhibit. And there's an exhibit coming this summer. I'm not uh, allowed to say the details of it, all I can say, it will be a, a civil rights exhibit and there will be some pieces that have never been seen before. So hopefully you can come back in the summer and enjoy that exhibit as well. How about any festivals that are coming up in the fall? Is there anything that you can share with us? Uh, one of the, I mean, one, uh, there's no, uh, uh, no, not right now. I would <laughs> just say go to our website for some of that information. We are not uh, ready to announce some of the details for some upcoming events because we are still working on them. But please continue to check our website for upcoming events and we will post them on the website. Or contact the American Jazz Museum, 474 Vine. And again, congratulations and thank you for having us here in such a great, great space. And Quasella, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you coming and, 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 and getting to know a little bit about what we are doing here. It's happening at 18th and Vine. Those people who tell you it's not happening, it is happening at the Vine. Please come and visit. And the website is www.americanjazzmuseum.org. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area.
about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. Every five years, KCMO residents must vote on the city's e-tax. This year's election will be held on Tuesday, April 5th. If you would like more information about the earnings tax or you'd like to know where your polling place is located, visit our website at kcmo.gov and search e-tax facts. Do you resolve to get healthier this year? Come out to Hillcrest Community Center, 104 Hillcrest Road, on Saturday, March 19th. That's between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. for a no-cost health screening. More than 25 organizations dedicated to the health of the community will be available to do things like check your blood pressure, perform lead screenings, and a lot of other healthy activities. There will also be senior club community information tables, a DJ, and door prizes. For more information, call 816-513-8560. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and all of our great programs for viewing on demand. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.